Right. Hey everyone, welcome to the uh, weekly Unreal Engine Twitch stream. I'm Chance, your community manager. I'm here with Unreal General Manager Ray Davis and uh, Technical Director Mike Fricker. Hello. Hello. Uh, today we're going to be looking over a number of things like uh, what's coming in 4.4 very soon, uh, sneak peek into 4.5, uh, some updates on the Linux editor that's been built up by the community, and a quick look at Marketplace. Uh, so let's get started. Joe, let's take a look over at the uh, community spotlight. Cool. So, what is the first one we have here? Yeah, first up on Community Spotlight is a... Uh, drag it over? <laughs> yeah. Is a, let's see, it's a student project out of, uh, I think, the Seneca School in Toronto. And it is a recreation of the magician's area in the movie The Prestige. And I know, Chance, you haven't seen The Illusionist. Have you seen The Illusionist? Yeah, I did. I okay. liked it. It was good. Which is better, though. That, every time I see this, is it Procedure Illusionist? <laughs> they both came at the same time. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a big competition, right? Yeah, but which one's got Michael Caine in it? I'm just saying. No, who has David Bowie? That's, that's the question. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, if we're going to go to Bowie, let's go to later. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, really, awesome. really cool set pieces in here. Great use of lighting and materials. Yeah. Um, very dark and harrowing feeling. Uh, yes. I'm a big fan. I'm curious, did they, is there any mention of what they're doing with this next, or is this... No, I'm not entirely sure. I actually, yeah. yeah, I came across this via some random social media outlet and cool. picked up on it. It's really nice. Seems like the set for the next Doom or something, yeah. right? Like demon bust through the floor. It has like a Bioshock kind of light. Yeah, yeah, yeah like the yeah. colored fog. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe this is the next Bioshock. Mm. Announced on our live stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Starring Michael Caine. Michael Caine. And David Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie, yeah. Cool. So yeah, so we're yeah really impressed with the way that the reflections are done here. Yeah, Some I like the, the little detail effects, on the glass too. Yeah. Glass, yeah. That's good, good stuff. Light cookies. Yeah. Did you say light cookies? Yeah. <laughs> what are light cookies? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next one we've That's got here. That's a real here. thing. Is it? Yeah. Yes, it is. No, you <laughs> yeah. guys are messing with me. No, light cookies what are. Yeah. What do light like cookies cookie? are? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> Here we are to the next one here. This is a, a Katamari Jam game made by form user Shan Thosa. Basically, the Katamari Jam is just the only rule was to make it Katamari. Katamari. <laughs> so we got Slimy Katamari. Yeah. yeah, this wonderful cuttlefish here. This thing is awesome. Yeah, just rolling through. Really nice caustics on the water there. Just <sighs> slopping I, about. Yeah. Does this part show that? Oh my God, that actually works. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't imagine, like, this is one that hurt me as, as a programmer. How would I actually make this work? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of Octodad a little. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I just picture this game ending with, like, washed up on shore with, like, like boots and cans and, like, debris yeah. stuck to you. Yeah, look at this <laughs> awesome. guy go. Yeah, like, the little, it, it's, it's got really a good creative. feel. And it, and it looks, the simulation seems really stable, right? That's yeah. the surprising part. There's no weird twisting or anything like that. I want like a version that uses the leap with every finger being a different tentacle. Oh yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I think we can actually do that too. Oh yeah. Interesting. Yeah. My daughter, this is one of her favorite toys right now is one of those little sticky things. And after like, what, five seconds of things just covered in hair and just nasty. It's awesome. Yeah. But anyways, so, this yeah. is amazing. Yeah, this was, this <laughs> was pretty neat. I can't wait to see what he ends up doing with yeah, it. Yeah, I hope he keeps it going. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Or she. Or it. This one is uh, pre-alpha footage of a game out of a company in Switzerland called Charline Entertainment called Identity Crisis. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it looks like they're doing kind of an episodic story, third-person action adventure. Ooh, thanks. Yeah, awesome. It's got a nice concept-y yeah. vibe to it, right? Yeah. When blood was yeah, shed very in well vain, realized. and people <laughs> yeah. slaughtered each other like animals. And well put together a little Back cinematic then, too. All we could do was watch. Now mm. it is my duty to restore peace and order and purge this planet of its stigma mm. so that I may provide, no, be, the so, guiding yeah, light sci -fi that is open or fantasy, to all the some combination sci thereof, it looks sci like. Sci-fi. Sci-fi? Yeah, I think so. It's, called. <laughs> it's a technical <laughs> term. <laughs> Whatever it is, it looks awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. It feels like we're seeing more cool cutscene stuff now that Matinee has documentation. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I don't know. Go figure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then in one of the more interesting things I've seen, yeah. uh, this guy, for a forum user, I think, yeah, Arixis. Oh, Matthew Winley? Yeah, Matthew there we go. Winley. Yeah, yeah. He uh, proposed to his girlfriend using a uh, modification of the sample content from Couch Nights and some other things. So this was a. Uh, Nice little treat to find last week. Yeah, that's awesome. It's really sweet. 
Yeah, he, he sold it to her as, hey, check out the prototype to this game I'm working on. I, I bet she was really complaining too, like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> really? This is the best you could do? No. <laughs> oh. Oh, oops. Got it. <laughs> yeah, this is great though. No, this is such a cool idea. Congratulations, too. guys. Yes. I mean, yeah. Assuming it works out at the end of this. Uh, it, it does. She, he, she did say yes, is what I've been, been okay. told. So. Okay. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. We yeah. followed up and got good news. Yeah, this is a much better proposal story than my own. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> I had a friend who, uh, he totally went the full nine yards. He, like, found this deserted island, went there ahead of time, buried, like, a picnic in a treasure chest, and, like, a ring was hidden in it. It was just ridiculous. I'm like, you make us look bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have to be a competition, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just got to say, oh, we chose the route that was less flashy. Yeah, <laughs> efficiency, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, and so we also got a couple of uh, games that were uh, announced yeah. at Gamescom that we're really excited about, built with the engine. Yeah, um, Gamescom is... Is this me or is it getting bigger and bigger every year? Yeah, right? looking at some of those pictures that the guys have been posting is just like ridiculously crowded. It's yeah. really, really a spectacle. All right, yeah, so this is uh, Rhyme, the latest trailer by Tequila Works. It's just a really awesome style, very inspired by Wind Waker, I guess. Yeah, it, Wind Waker or Eco. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me, yeah. it evokes Eco, yeah. Yeah, I, it does. Watching this trailer reminded me of, you know, when I was like 14 and how magical cool. games were, right? Like, yeah. it's it's pretty stellar looking thing. I would love to know how they did some of the effects on this. <laughs> really yeah. creative uses. Like, really, yeah, really yeah, creative yeah. uses of yeah. materials. Like, Fortnite has some stuff like this going on, very stylized uh, particles and shaders, but... Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I'm glad to see these kind of games gaining popularity again. Like, Journey was really surprising. Of like, a yeah, I love Journey. Yeah. No, no real violence to speak of. You know, just no, no real guidance at all. It's like here you are, go that way. <laughs> but it was a really immersive experience, right? Yeah, this is a pretty excellent put together trailer too. Like, mm -hmm. this is the team that did Dark Light, right? The UV3 title. Mm -hmm. Tequila. Tequila works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course, after we looked at this, it immediately reminded me of Last Guardian, so I had to yeah. go watch that old trailer again. And <laughs> Ray and I cried. Shed a few tears, yeah. yeah. I sure hope that game comes real someday. <laughs> no, that's a shame. How many times has it been shown? Three? I don't know. Four? Uh, just ship it. Even if it's terribly broken, just ship it. <laughs> cool. That was great. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, so really looking forward to that one. Cool. And I think we had uh, one more that we wanted. This one kind of caught us by surprise. It's yeah, awesome. this one is a little close to my heart. Big fan of the team. This is a uh, Hellblade <laughs> by Ninja, Ninja Theory. Theory. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so Baby, big Baby. fan of Heavenly Sword and Enslaved. Seeing this, I was really, 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 really stoked. Yeah, Enslaved was one of my favorite games. I think yeah. right near the end. Of, yeah, I just really liked it. It felt really good and yeah. uh, excellent narrative. So it I'm just, sure we'll see more of that. It was one of those games. It was like reading a novel. I just wanted to just. I'm going to finish this today. <laughs> I, yeah, ex and exactly. I must see the end of it today. Yeah, it was awesome. like a weekend play for me. Yeah. It's so. fun, though. You guys make me feel guilty. I, I picked it up, but I, I still haven't actually played it. I'm terrible. It's good. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, the classic looks... sword gripping. Do we have a rating for our, our stream? Are we PG-13 yet? Uh, we should check on that. <laughs> well, there was the disclaimer at the beginning of the video, right? So oh, okay. <laughs> so Ninja Theory tweeted that they made this trailer in UE4, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. It looks great. Really, 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 really good. Uh, oh, that's not creepy at all. No. Yeah, yeah it's impressive, especially the facial animation there. Uh, yeah. Just the character is really well put together. It does kill me, though. We need better hair solution in UE4. Mm, yeah, <laughs> we do. They do really good characters, though. They'll yeah. find a way to get the hair right. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it just reminded me of uh, Infiltrator hair, the same. Mm, yeah. Dreadlock special. It still looks awesome, though. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Great. Awesome. All right. So we'll pull cool. Down. So that, 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 yeah, that covers the community spotlight, right? Yep. And then uh, we have a special quick guest. Mm -hmm. uh, Dimitri is going to join us real quick. Come on in here. We'll get you mic'd yeah, up. This is Dimitri Reckman, our platform team. Uh, a programmer and local Linux expert. Yes. If it doesn't Smash work, it's his fault. No. <laughs> All right. Welcome, Dimitri. Okay. So Dimitri is going to give us an update on the status of Linux editor support. Yeah. Editor is the main thing for the community, so we increased our uh, priority for that, too. And uh, we are still catching up with uh, external work. 
but we are largely there. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, say a great thank you to Amigo and Wemi, uh, on whose shoulder we now stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I also want to use the opportunity to ask them not to diverge too much for us. There are ongoing discussions on IRC, mm. <laughs> uh, which way to go. <clears throat> Uh, I want to stress that we are ramping up our internal testing. If you diverge too much, you won't benefit the, uh, from that, at least not at the full extent. Um, and we are going to have QA actually filing bugs um, to to the backtracker, which we haven't yet exposed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but we are working on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, GitHub has its own built-in bug tracker that uh, we've been investigating. I don't know if we're, we're getting closer to maybe giving that a shot. Yeah, we, we have a meeting today, actually, about that. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, so um, if you want to check out the uh, Linux editor, I suggest that you use main branch, which is master in GitHub, uh, not 4.4 or earlier. You can also use excellent Amigos fork. Mm -hmm. uh, so someone forked the engine and is maintaining. Yeah, they, they have put on a lot of effort. That's awesome. Yeah, they have been uh, running the editor for months. I, I mean, that's why we want the code out there, right? Like, so yeah. people can take the engine and port it to exotic platforms or Linux or update it to new compilers. That, <laughs> Not you know, that exotic, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've seen some attempts at some pretty exotic ones, but yeah. So uh, we are now, I believe we are now largely uh, um, on parity with Amigos Fork. We have been working closely with them. Cool. So cool. check out. Yeah. And then uh, and we're targeting to get this officially part of 4.5 then? Or are we still on the fence on what we Seeing how it goes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Once goes. we get it in QA's hands, I think that will be telling, yeah. right? Yeah. Good this point is out. like the experiment or the experience we had with Mac support when we kind of turned on Mac support and gave it to QA to like, okay, we think it's kind of good, QA. <laughs> they found yeah, like they, a thousand they, bugs. Yeah, they, they corrected that, yes. <laughs> there are and then we worked on it for a few more months. They <laughs> made bugs. Yeah. They didn't find <laughs> <laughs> They made bugs, yeah. yes. There are too many rough edges for now to yeah. actually yeah. expose it. Yeah, but uh, again, I appreciate the work that Amigo and Wami, mm -hmm. Wami, I hope I pronounced him right. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually pronounced him, I always chat. He'll correct yeah. you on IRC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they have put in a lot of effort. And we appreciate you guys by thinking how to reward you. Cool. Yeah, cool. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Cool. Thanks to me. Cool. That's it. For yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, then, with that note, we were going to talk about 4.4. We're actually in the process of getting our 4.4 build out there. I believe it's within a couple hours it'll be available in the launcher. That's right. It's going to be uh, available today. Today. Woo. It would have been available by now, but yeah. somebody dropped the, the, the hard drive. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Um, cool. So we thought we maybe uh, well just walk through some of the highlights. I know we talked a little bit last week about 4.4, but... Yeah. Know. I first wanted to start out by just uh, thanking the community for... Again, contributing, I think, almost 30, 27 fixes or 30 fixes and features yep. for the 4.4 release. Um, and this was one of our shorter cycles, too, actually. Like, I yep. think we had maybe three and a half weeks yeah, of development on this one. So, But we still got 30 fixes in from the community, which is awesome, and a ton of cool features that we'll talk about in a second. So I want to call out some of the cool stuff, um, some force feedback support. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not going to pronounce people's names because I'm going to butcher them, but they'll be online today in the credits <laughs> uh, and in the editor credits, uh, so you can see them right in the editor window. Well, there's a name I remember, Rama. Oh, yes, Rama. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yeah, Rama, Rama's been, I think, three fixes, three he's or four in, improvements. Yeah, he's, in, he's in three. Three? Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you, Rama. So Very we're cool. We're going to have to have special achievements for repeat contributors. <laughs> we had a lot of repeat contributors. This is great. Yeah, we've awesome. got a couple yeah. of them. Uh, so we have tube lights, a bunch of performance optimizations. Right. Um, we s now support templates inside plugins, which is something that we're going to do really cool stuff with in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite ready yet, but um, and uh, a number of uh, just cool gameplay API improvements. So, like you can take in blueprints now, you can take uh, world coordinates and project them to the screen. I think Ram also helped with that one. Mm -hmm. um, so, just some really cool things, and then you know dozens of bug fixes that you know I, we might not have gotten to. So, it's really cool that, to have your guys' help. So, again, thanks very much for yeah. that. Yeah, cool. 
Um, so some of the other stuff coming in, right? So we talked about UMG last week. Um, I was actually talking to Matt right before this, and apparently he was up till 2 a.m. last night trying to get 3D support hacked in, or, <laughs> sorry, you know, built in. Um, but thanks to Time Warner, it, his internet crapped out, so he lost connection to the Perforce server. Oh. So if it wasn't for Time Warner, UMG would have 3D support right now. <laughs> right now. Oh, in, in Master Branch also. Yeah, yeah. 445, so, four, it will be there for sure. By 3D support, I think we mean like taking 3D, 3D primitives, or 2D UI primitives, mm -hmm. and getting them projected into the world. Yeah, yeah. And then input. And yeah, that's what he said. There's yeah. still some stuff yeah. to work out on the input side of actually how we handle some of the edge cases there. But yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, that, that, that was loud and clear, I think, the number one feedback we got from the UMG preview. So it's good to get uh, quick turnaround oh, awesome. on that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it seems like doing in-world UI these days is the thing to do, right? It's the mm -hmm. cool thing to do for yeah. 3D It's games. more immersive, yeah. right? Throwing stuff on top of the screen, no. I don't, don't, want, don't want that anymore. I don't know. I, I'm still just, I had a lot of fun the first time I, I plugged in EMG. The fact that it's just from its core integrated with blueprints. Yep. I was immediately making stuff that was absolutely worthless, but very entertaining. Yep. <laughs> it, was, it was very easy to get uh, you know, combinations and logics and swapping things around. Um, and especially as we continue to build out the animation support, I think it's going to be pretty impressive. What oh, we can definitely. Accomplish there. We have huge, ambitious plans. <laughs> for so, uh, so I guess this is the first release with UMG. It's actually been had QA testing, some QA yeah. testing. Yeah, it's still yeah. early days, feature-wise, but... Like, yeah. this is pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, I mean, officially, we're still calling it a preview, right? Yeah. We're by no means done by what we define as done yep. here. And even even once we hit that 1.0, we're going to continue to work on this for quite some time, right? Because yep. there's, there's a lot you can and should do with UIs, and we want to make that as uh, easy as possible. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, if you haven't tried already, please do. Well, once 4.4 is available to everybody at large, um, it's actually surprisingly in good shape already. Yeah. yeah, and there's a really productive forum thread that Nick yeah. Darnell and Matt Kuhlenschmidt have going on where... Yeah. You know, they'll take your feedback and they're pretty responsive and getting things yeah. fixed and, and adapting. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, just participate, help us make it better. Cool. Um, yeah, and so Paper 2D, that's another one that's still an still active development, but we're moving quite along with it. Yep. Um, I would say, like, from a feature point of view, quite a bit is there. I'm using it already in my home <laughs> yeah. project. I, like, I made a top down shooter, the, all the sprites, and yeah, well, where, where is it? Why aren't we looking yeah. at it? Come on. It's so <laughs> ugly. <laughs> it's so ugly. Holding out on us. So ugly. <laughs> But, but it's fun. Yeah, so I, I know uh, Nolan and then Dinesh, there's still a long list of uh, features they've got planned there. And I think that's one of those, it's similar with UMG, even once you have all the features, there's a lot of just workflow improvements, right? And, yeah. you know, from uh, supporting every file format under the sun to drag and drop workflows, all that good stuff. And, and also just making it just really feel fun and clean and yeah. just bring it up to that kind of high quality bar. We, <laughs> we, we try to make every tool feel like it's a box product by itself. That's kind of like yeah. um, the culture that we're trying to, well, to get here on the tools program. Well, and I would even take it like fundamentally, like we want the act of using the tools itself to be a delight and sure. fun, right? Yeah, because if, if they're not easy to use, people yeah. are going to work around them, right? Yeah, yeah, well, and even just like a lot of us, we make guns, or make guns. We make games in our spare time just because it's fun, right? Guns in the games. Yeah, yeah well, games with guns. Yeah. Some of us okay. make guns in our spare time. Whoa, right. whoa, whoa. <laughs> Can I get a new host, please? It's <laughs> feeling a little awkward now. Take his 3D printer away. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, there was a really cool, it seems like a small feature, but it was actually really awesome, the, the surface snapping when you're placing actors now. Yep. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. been requested for about five years here, even like by the <laughs> Epic level designers. But was that, that was probably with, like, one of the first tasks when you joined Epic as tools in the day. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's awesome that we had that. It's funny, we've had that feature when you drag things from Content Browser, yep. it did the surface snapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always did from day one, um, but we didn't have a way that you could do that with something that was already in the world, mm -hmm. so this feature gives you that. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty cool. cool. And then, yeah, Persona, that, that's, that's got a lot of much needed love this time, right? 4.4 has, I don't, gosh, it's like 30 improvements, and, mm -hmm. and at least a dozen of them are pretty major uh, yeah. usability changes. Uh, I mean, you'll see in the release notes today, and, and the 4.4 preview release notes had most of the, the big improvements, but yeah. just a huge usability uh, push in Persona, and we're still, we're still working on it, too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but it's much, much more fun to work with. Um, and then in general, I mean, I know there's our ongoing efforts on improving compile times, uh, general stability, uh, ever-growing push in, in Android and platform, you know, both the mobile devices support their compatibility. Um, as you guys can see, we have our, our wiki page where we're documenting 
Um, the feature set for each you know, Android device, because there's huge diversity of devices out there. Um, but make it easy to figure out whatever devices you guys are targeting. You can understand what's already been tested and, yep. and what versions it worked with. Um, and that's something we're going to actively maintain and grow with every version from here on out. Um, yeah, and actually, I don't know if you want to talk about sort of some of the thoughts on that for 4.5. Yeah, I mean, well, Android specifically, actually, like I was pretty, I used it uh, uh, just this last Thursday pretty significantly. Uh, first time I've used it a lot in a few weeks prior to that, and I was actually really happy. Like it was, every, my whole project that I made, my horribly, <laughs> horrible <laughs> graphics top-down shooter uh, with sprites worked perfectly on the device with perfect controls first time. So yeah. it worked great. I think like where, we ha where we're working on and where we have to work on is the iteration times, yep. making iteration faster, compatibility, which is already we're you know, full, full speed ahead with compatibility. But yeah. you know, we're, we're already supporting the popular devices, um, yeah. and we'll keep chipping away at the fringe devices. But you know, I'm pretty happy with how it is. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it works pretty reliably. Um, at least for my simple case, but I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, and just from the complete, you know, fresh out of the box experience, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to get the engine, download, download what you need, install SDKs as much as we can automate yes. those steps for you guys. Yep. Um, just because it is a nightmare. I remember the first time, God, it was probably about four years ago, I tried to do Android development from scratch, and it was it was intense, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On Thursday, I tried the manual approach where instead okay. of using that the the NVIDIA. Uh, TDP installer, right. I, I just went, oh, I'm just going to get the SDKs yeah, yeah, as if yeah. I had them installed. And, you know, it was mostly smooth. I think <laughs> we'll do a little bit of work there. We'll help with environment variables. and yeah. uh, But, you know, mostly worked pretty well. I was pretty happy with that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, environment we'll variables are usually the ones that, that's like the biggest hitch you have, right, in setting it up. And that's not even that big of a deal. Yeah, we, and we don't uh, want people to have to struggle with that. Like, yeah. I think we'll find a way that the editor, yeah. it'll just be like, hey, uh, I put the Android SDK here. The editor will help you with that stuff. Yeah, that's what yeah. we want, right? Yeah. But, and I think 4.4 actually has some improvements along this line. We added an in editor tutorial to help you with iOS provisioning. So right. rather than just be like, go to the go figure go it out. Apple, yeah. ask Apple how to do this. We'll try to, yeah. you know, the, the golden path isn't that long. So I think us having a tutorial to help guide people through it is nice. Yeah. Well, and one other thing that, you know, early with like 4.3, for example, you know, if you went to deploy to Android, but you hadn't had the, like if we didn't detect the an SDK installed or all that, the option disappeared, right. Yeah. right? So it wasn't obvious that, oh, I am I need to install something. There's some missing step. So now we're making it consistent, right? Yeah. Like the play button will show those platforms. It'll yep. show there'll it be does. a tooltip. And, and like I said, we're adding tutorials to help you get that all sorted out. So, yep. um, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice on the iOS side, too, because, you know, getting mixed up in the provisioning side when you don't really know how, mm -hmm. how the whole workflow goes, right? That can be kind of a daunting task. So, yeah. yep. so those kind of things are great. Cool. Uh, yeah, were there any other four four things you wanted to touch on, Mike? Oh, I think there's only a few things. We added in-app purchase support for blueprints, so you can use those in your mobile games now. Yep. Um, let's see, what else we got? Uh, you mentioned the Persona stuff. We have the new Landscape Mountains sample that's coming soon, right? Right, yeah, yeah. That thing's actually looking pretty awesome these I, days. I don't know when it's actually Yeah, do we have it? a... I don't know. We need yeah. somebody ask it's, Leslie. It's getting Leslie. yeah, <laughs> it's, get, it's getting ready. Uh, so we're going to highlight yeah. it in the today's release notes. So you'll see a preview screenshot. But mm -hmm. it's I think one of the next, if not the next, um, piece of free content um, yeah. that shows off the terrain system. Yeah, awesome. yeah. And it's a pretty pretty large environment already. Yeah, it's yeah. it's nice. large, but we have a larger one coming later yeah. too. <laughs> Shh, don't tell people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of interest. I think a lot of discussions are on large environments and how we always make them bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's some interesting uh, infrastructure work we have to tackle for that. Yep. Um, cool. All right. So we would maybe talk a little more about 4.5 and some of the things that we're, we're planning, what we're focusing on. So uh, the gameplay team has added a new template for you guys for 4.5. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a twin stick shooter. So kind of probably be better than the one I made last week uh, <laughs> out of the box. Uh, so we'll have that. And there'll be a Blueprint 1 and a C++ 1, of mm. course. Um, there's all kinds of stuff we're doing for 4.5 on the lines of usability. I'll talk about that a little bit more in, the, in a second. But mm -hmm. because I was talking about templates, one of the cool things we're doing is we're redesigning the whole project creation flow uh, so that it's a little bit cleaner and simpler. Uh, the whole UI for selecting which template and what the name of your project. Um, uh, we're basically rebuilding that UI to make it uh, flow a little better. And, and you know, we have a lot of templates now, and we want to have a lot more. Yeah. Uh, so making sure that those can be organized and, and displayed in kind of a nice way is part of that. Well, and, and, you know, right when we started, we, we segregated on uh, C++ versus Blueprint. But there's also a lot of yep. projects out there that are both Blueprints and C++, right? And, yep, that's right. Um, 
at one point we had this vision of like, hey, you want to create a project, what, you, what, you, what kind of game, you know, like roughly speaking, what components are you interested in, what platforms are you going to target, right? Because if you're going to go for mobile and that's a decision you want to make up front, there's a lot of stuff that the yeah. editor can put in place for you, right? I think this is something that, I mean, we would still love feedback from people about yeah. this particular thing. Like, you know, when you're making a new project, are you thinking about it right then? Are you going straight to mobile? Yeah. Are you going to support PC and Mac or just PC? Like, are those decisions you want to make up front or prefer to make later yeah because they, they could help with how we provide tutorials and other yeah exactly and a lot of our design discussions were like if only we knew what they were trying to accomplish right. we could make a much better experience right yeah. so that's that's where we're thinking is like making it it's you know it's opt-in if you if you don't know like every project i start i have no idea i just I'm messing around, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have intent, like, yeah, I want to make a mobile game, then we can at least cater things for that up front. And um, we'll, we'll make sure, I mean, if we do set it up that way, we won't, we won't force you to decide up front. Yeah, um, and it's you, always changable at any point, and you right? Ch yeah. So one of the things we're looking at, and it's still being flushed out as kind of like a platform readiness uh, UI, so that, like right now, if you, if you make a game and it works great on Windows, and then you decide, oh crap, like I really want this on Android mm -hmm. right now, um, and it's a fairly complicated game. You may already have gone down the path of turning on and relying on graphics features that may not work too well on the particular Android device you're targeting. So, um, and sometimes figuring out all the settings to change to get it to fit and, and be optimal is it's kind of hard. It's hard even for us sometimes because it's a big, you well, know. Yeah, and it's not as simple as PC versus mobile, right? It's like, yeah, it's a fuzzy yeah, line. Yeah, like, yeah. Which, which, even, which even, Android device do you want to Or even, even with Apple devices, right? There's different GPU features depending yeah, on the yeah. generations of iPad versus iPad. Uh, it's a mess sometimes. So the idea with the platform readiness UI is that you'll tell us what platforms that you're interested in your project supporting. We already kind of have this UI in 4.4 uh, where you can choose which platforms you technically support. Yep. Um, but we want to take that further and basically have like a checklist that help you make sure that you have your settings kind of in a way that are uh, will get you the best possible results for the platforms. Well, that you and, and no surprises, right? So that we yeah. we never want to have that experience where you the first time you deploy to Android and you get like a yeah. black screen. You're like, oh god, yeah. Where do I start, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you don't need the highest quality motion blur turned on on yeah. you know your iPhone 4 4 S. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, and yeah, and there's a lot of things that aren't obvious in those situations that may be eating performance that, you know, unless you really dig yeah. in there. So definitely much, much better experience for that. Um, speaking cool. on iteration times, like there's two big things that stand out. One, C++. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to, actually. This is near dear to my heart, okay. as usual. Every time I'm on Twitch, I say that. Uh, but he cares <laughs> about programming, in case you didn't yeah. know. <laughs> C++ stuff. So, yeah. okay, so we have some really cool stuff coming. Um, they didn't quite make 4.4, but for 4.5, and some of these changes are in the GitHub master branch already, uh, you can now hot reload. Uh, any changes you make to gameplay code can be hot reloaded. So previously, you'd go and add new properties or add new classes, and you try to compile those without shutting down the editor by clicking the compile button on the toolbar. Yeah. And then it would be like, oh, you know, sorry, those types of changes, you're going to have to quit and recompile and then reload. Uh, so that's gone now. That will never happen. Uh, any type of gameplay changes that you make uh, to your modules while the editor's open, you can just compile it. Click the compile button on the toolbar, yeah. and it will digest them, compile as fast as it can, and get it loaded up and apply instantly. So that's pretty exciting because the experience that I have, like when I was building my, my crappy game last week, is like I just keep the editor open the whole time. The only time it ever shuts down is you know if I make a programming mistake and somehow crash <laughs> the editor, but it just stays open. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. So it, it's interesting getting in that, that flow of like, oh, I'll just load the editor in the morning, I'll just keep it open while I do my work today. For a C++ programmer, that yeah. is very, very unusual workflow and very like well, liberating. It, well, and it, it's hard to trust it at first, right? Yeah, at first, yeah. It's so right. unnatural. <laughs> it works really good, though, and you know, if we find any issues, we'll fix it. We're, we plan to make this as robust as possible, but I kid you not, like I worked almost all day the Saturday before last, and I, the only time the editor shut down was if I you know, if I wanted it to shut down. So that was one of the biggest uh, workflow hurdles in UE3, right? Like oh, having yeah. to do that, even with scripts, just compile scripts yep. and then kill yeah. it and bring so, it back so up. It's really nice. Yep, yeah, so some other parts of this. So uh, we're also making it so that um, if you're in Xcode or in Visual Studio and you have the editor open, you can just go and, and build from there and you don't have to even worry that the editor's still open. What we'll do is we'll compile the binaries anyways, kind of off to the side. And the editor will pick up on that. It'll see the changes and just kind of suck those changes right in. Right. So the editor can just be hanging out. And even if you don't want to go to the editor because you're busy and you're in the zone in Visual Studio or next code, you can just make changes there and they'll update in the editor automatically. So that's the workflow that we're, we're, we're testing right now. And we're hoping for 4.5 four, we have both of those yep. uh, uh, big improvements, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. 
Well, and so another one that's going to be huge for iteration times for mobile deployment is the uh, the in editor mobile preview, right? So they've got the yep. the accurate ES2 uh, rendering pipeline working. So you just flip some settings in the editor viewport, and you'll see exactly how your game's going to look on device. Yeah, I think that, that I think that'll be in four five hopefully. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's the, it's, a, okay. it's it's close. Sweet. It's close. Yep. To the guys watching in the UK working on it. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's really close. So that's going to be, be awesome. Good. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's one thing. Even whether you're working on consoles or any sort of thing, it's so much faster to be able to stay on your PC and just iterate, iterate, iterate on the gameplay, and then after you know a, a large chunk of work, then deploy it and check it out, right? Yep. And so this will be a big one for mobile devices. The way it's going to work is like you'll be able to take a viewport of your choosing um, and just sort of flip that viewport into a platform emulation mode. So mm -hmm. say I want this to look like iPad yeah. uh, three, uh, and what we'll, we'll do is actually, on demand, in the background, compile shaders in a curiously iPad-like <laughs> way, still rendering, rendering under your native renderer. Mm -hmm. So even though they'll, it'll, they'll actually be you know, DirectX 11 shaders if you're on Windows platform, they'll be compiled just the same, like the like material compiler will generate them the same way it would have on mm -hmm. iPad, but they'll, so they'll look very much like they would on device. Mm -hmm. so, like, Strikingly close, as close Striking, as we can get. Yeah, it's not 100% accurate, but yep. it is more than enough to, to, to know what it's going to look like, right? Yep. Um, and I know there's there's ongoing efforts on on cooking as well for the other platforms. You know, being able to use the editor as the cooker, so yes. cook on the fly. That one seems a little more distant, but I'm probably it'd be awesome if we could do it for four or five. Well, it wouldn't it be awesome if we just say it's going to happen for four or five now. You can say that. I can say it. But <laughs> I don't know. It's it's it's, it's a big task. Yeah, it's right? a big task. Uh, but so that's the key to super fast iteration on consoles. Yeah. Where right now making changes and redeploying can can take some time. Yeah. Um, we want that to be a, like I'm, super fast. I'm surprised the Fortnite guys uh, haven't come kill us, you know, with pitchforks, fix your cooking times, because those guys have a tremendous amount of content, and just yeah, the nature of that, it's it's definitely a challenge. So. Well, luckily you can iterate a lot in the editor. Yep. You don't have to constantly uh, yep. recook. But when you're working with devices and you really need to touch <laughs> and you know get that experience on device, or you're testing in-app purchases or something like that, yep. like, it's very important to have those fast iteration times. Yep. Okay, and then also just it, we have some general header untangling and C++ global improvements. We're just making every build, we're making file times faster. There's, you'll see in the release notes today when 4.4 comes out, I think in about two hours, hopefully. Okay. Um, you'll see some progress that we've made towards that, but we're basically shrinking our include sizes. That whole thing is, you know, just trust us, every build we're going to make C++ compile times faster for full rebuilds and also iterative compiles. We have a nice thing coming in 4.5 that... Um, should make Unreal Build Tools start up very quickly. So mm -hmm. the time that you spend from when you invoke the compiler and you actually see your source files compiling should be pretty much instantaneous after these changes. We've done a lot of work there. Uh, so lots of iteration time improvements. It's just a huge, huge, huge focus. Cool. And then, of course, uh, Linux Editor, as we discussed. Yep. Totally available and 100% working on <laughs> all distributions. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Tread carefully with Linux Editor, but we're excited. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very cool. It's going to be awesome once we get QA testing it. Yeah. Um, let me see, what other, what other big efforts did we, did we not touch on? Um, so we have some on. other stuff coming for 4.5 that we, you know, I mean, uh, the new skin shading model. Right. That's in right. the master branch right now. So we have new screen space subsurface scattering. Uh, and you can kind of choose your different subsurface profile. We have a human skin one in there by default, so you can grab that and try it out. Um, that's something that, you know, this is our first version of it. We're going to keep trying to improve it. I think like we care a lot about making sure that you can render super awesome humans in UE4. Which like, means hair someday, I hope. Yes, hair. <laughs> yeah. Maybe 4.6. We'll so, so we really care about bald humans right now. <laughs> yeah. Bald humans with nice translucent skin. Yeah, amazing yeah. skin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're not, we don't like hairy things in the engine. Oh. No, just <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. HTML5 is another one, too, that... Um, oh, yeah. I feel kind of bad that we haven't been able to give it more love, but we are we're making that a priority again. So we're gonna hopefully get that back on track for four four five. Not one hundred percent guaranteed, but that is that is our intent. Um, and it'd be good to hear from the community on on how much interest and if there's specific uh, how you're actually targeting HTML five. If it's specific browsers, the type of games, that kind of stuff, would be really useful for us yeah. to know what to focus on first. Yeah, you know, what kind of games would be building to? Like what kind of features you want to see yeah, inside exactly. of it? Um, Just to be clear, like it. If you grab, if you grab the code from GitHub, you can deploy it. You can HTML5. Deploy it, it works. We yeah. keep it working. Yeah. Um, but we it hasn't been. 
It, it, yeah, there's there's a it works, and then it's like a first class citizen. And I, yeah. I think what I'm saying is I want to I want to get it to a first class citizen in the near future. So. Yeah, we want the version that you get from the launcher to yeah. be able to deploy to it. Well, and especially for virtual teams, it's such a powerful thing to be able. I, I did this no. in my own side projects where it's just oh yeah, done working for the day. Let me export a build HTML5 and bam, you know it's it's much easier than having to dig into Perforce or you know build a a, a build myself, right? So. Yep. Cool. Yeah, um, totally agree. We had a note here, you know, the parallel rendering effort. You know, I think a big chunk of that is going in, um, and that will be part of 4.5. I don't know, do you want to speak more of what that entails? Uh, some of it's in 4.4. We're just yeah. steadily making improvements. You, and even in 4.4, you can enable the new parallel uh, renderer. Uh, there's a console command. I, I put it in the release notes, so you'll see that, how to turn it on today. Um, and I think there's some speed ups there, but I mean, the big benefits are coming down the line for 4.5. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but basically, it allows us to uh, parallelize the creation of static sort of draw call batches so that uh, we can build them all up in parallel and not uh, and then and then dispatch them in parallel on uh, renderers that support that like DirectX 12 mm -hmm. and some of the new consoles but even on the, the consoles that don't support parallel dispatch um, just building it all up all the state up in parallel and then being able to reuse it uh, is still a huge win mm -hmm. so uh, that's definitely I mean they're working hard on that that's a huge priority so yeah it's going to be pretty awesome. And then part of it's just future proofing, right? So, you know, we have an engine that can scale to as many cores as you want to throw on it. We don't want to leave those cores idle ever, right? Yeah. If you totally. want to use them, you should be able to use them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was that was something that was interesting to take UE2 to UE3, where, you know, like the Xbox and especially the PlayStation 3 was was monstrous with, yep. it's not just multiple cores, they're cores with different, significantly different functionality, right? <laughs> um, and the engine, you know, historically built around a single core model, right? So. Yep. Um, but yeah, UE4 is in a much better proposition for this across the board. Definitely. Cool. Um, I'm going to jump ahead here because this is another awesome feature that almost made it to 4.4 except somebody took vacation, <laughs> which I won't name who. No, it's, it's so part of the usability and, and making sure that like it's easy to find all the stuff is the integrated search into the editor. Mm. So we're actually repurposes the, the, there's a little console bar there now. It's like a search and it'll bring up documentation. Does it actually, does it use our new global search functionality? Uh, it should. It should. <laughs> define global search. Well, as you guys have seen, like on the website, we started unifying our search. So oh, you yeah. search one oh. place, you'll see documentation, forums, answer hub, and you can click between all those. Um, we want to be able to integrate our video tutorials in that as well. I think it works like that. I don't know if it uses the same okay. thing. Uh, well, we have to check with those guys. Someday, someday. Yeah. Um, and then maybe even someday, we'll be able to pop up Zach Parrish's head in the editor. It's like, oh, he'll be like our new Clippy, right? It's like, <laughs> I see you're trying to make a fire effect. <laughs> no Clippy. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if anyone's used that console in the top right, but we're going to keep that. It's just going to get relocated um, probably into the viewport. Mm -hmm. um, so it will become a kind of like a super search. Uh, yeah. Let's come yeah, super search, integrate right in the editor. Uh, lots of work to just, you know, better tutorials, more integration with them. Uh, more links to documentation where you yep. need it. Like if you're act operating on this particular class, well, let's make sure you can easily get to the reference on that. Yeah, we're redesigning the whole tutorial system, like yeah. pretty much. Uh, to we're trying some kind of cool <laughs> experimental things, but yeah. I mean, it, we're going to have new tutorials, which will be fun. And I, I, I love your note here, or somebody's note. What? New tutorial system, not annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're replacing our annoying tutorial that. system. <laughs> well, so the current tutorial system is, we, I mean, the documentation team yeah. did a great job creating tutorials, but the content this, is great. Yeah, but <laughs> we, I mean, probably yeah. I decided, like, it should just pop up, yeah. right? And I hate pop-ups. I don't know about everyone else. So yeah. uh, we want to get rid of all that pop-up stuff. I, you know, open the Blueprint Editor the first time in a new computer and, yeah. like, poof. It's like, yeah. I just kind of want to see what was behind that before, you know, yeah. I have to read this. So. Well, and the worst part, you dismiss it, and then it's not it never comes where, back. Yeah, where is it? It's yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're, we're going to fix all that stuff and make them more fun, too. They won't just cover the screen. And you're having to always move the window around. Yeah. Do a better job. And then the kind of other part of that, too, is we're going to, we're going to try out having template-specific tutorials. Mm -hmm. So if you go and create like um, a, f a game from a first-person blueprint template uh, or a code template, we want the tutorial, tutorial. for that project. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of rather than just kind of dump all this code and be like, "Have fun," you know, figure yeah. out what we wrote for you. Yeah. <laughs> this will take you on a little bit of a tour through the classes and the code that's there, so that you don't feel like oh, man, this is great, but I kind of wish I had started from scratch so I could know how it worked. Yeah, and I, I think this would be great for community uh, projects, you know, because like, everybody has a different, where they put their blueprint logic or whatever. Totally. You know, but that first, oh, okay, let me see how this is actually laid out. My, my first vibe is sometimes, okay, I, this is great, but I like, kind of want to tear it down and just kind of like, yeah. you know, just kind of make it my own and just like nitpick it. So are we going to be able to make tutorials in blueprints then? Yes, that awesome, will be yeah. coming in 4.5 too. Yeah, awesome, so users yeah. will be able to create tutorials in blueprints and give them out. Put them, I'll eventually put them on the marketplace. 
Oh, yeah. What marketplace? Oh, oh, oh. nothing. <laughs> Can't talk about that yet. <laughs> we will talk about seconds. it in, in five minutes, maybe. <laughs> but first, let's talk about plugins and the work we're doing there. I guess that ties into marketplace, actually. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we have a plugin system today, but there's some challenges and some, some more work for us ahead of there, right? Yeah, the main problem we have right now, um, well, I mean, one of the problems, one of the reasons plugins aren't ready ready is because if you have a blueprint only game mm -hmm. um, and you try to ship a game that uses plugins, by default, the plugin won't come with your game. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's obviously a big problem. Uh, there's an easy workaround and it's posted about on the forums. You can turn your game into a code project before you release it and it kind of just happens, it kind of works then. Yeah. But we want that fixed. So. But it's a kind of an architectural change that we're working on, and it's all part of getting plugins ready for our more ambitious plans for, yeah. Yeah, for the marketplace. The yeah. Blank, blank thing yeah. that I'm not allowed to talk about for a few minutes. Marketplace, marketplace. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, is there any other four or five things you want to mention before we jump on then? Um, I think we're pretty good. Uh, I don't know if we. Part of new particle stuff. It's on the roadmap. We can talk yeah. about Cascade 2.0. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess there's a couple of things. So yeah, uh, Olaf has, has joined us. Has been working yep. on. Uh, we've got a plan together in early prototypes. I guess already of Niagara, yep. Cascade successor. Uh, I think the the main gist of it is uh, it's it's a node based system versus hmm. Cascade and its modules. Sort of leaving that to the side. Yep. Um, really focusing, I think, a lot of efforts on just good workflows, right? You know, mm -hmm. making it easier to create things. Cascade is really powerful, but it has some it's, kind of scary dark corners. It's, it's right. a dark art, right? And the it, people who are good at it are not nice people. It was designed by Code Ninjas, who, yes. you yeah. know. Um, but so Niagara will be a total redesign of the particle system. We'll keep Cascade around too. Your stuff's not going to stop working. Don't yeah. worry. Go ahead and use Cascade. Yeah. It'll stay around for a long time. Uh, and, and I actually think uh, we're, is there's an easy path from Cascade to Niagara once we actually are at you know, feature parity there. So. Yeah. Yep. so it's not checked in yet. So um, I believe the rendering team has it in a branch, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, But hopefully um, for 4.5, I expect to see that merged into master branch. So even though it probably won't be... It's still a long ways out, let's it, be clear. Yeah, right? it probably won't be even experimental, but we'll get the code in your hands as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, we're trying to get the, we're trying to do more stuff right in the master branch so that you guys can see it even when it's in super early state mm -hmm. uh, so we can get feedback early because we think that for things like uh, on our motion graphics, that's been very successful. Yeah, yeah. But no doubt. baby steps. Yeah. Yeah, definitely on UMG. It, it was nice to have feedback a along the way. You know, even even in our preview, I think the first time I mentioned the idea of a preview, yeah. Matt was not happy. Sorry, <laughs> Matt. But I, I think it, it's worked really well, yeah, right? It and has. It's, it's a good lesson for us, too, to, to learn how to develop things more transparently, right? And when you guys get it today, uh, I think you guys are going to, it's going to be fun. You can make UI data-driven, with yeah. use, hook it up to blueprints easily, yeah. uh, get it in your game, even. Yeah. Uh, the last thing oh, well, I think we should mention that um, just the work that the networking team has been doing, mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to just call out just like, just we do kind of a lot of, there's a lot of things that don't get much yeah. visibility because they're kind of under the hood. Mm -hmm. But like Unreal Engine has huge, like kind of amazing, exhaustive support for networking. Mm -hmm. Like more than anyone usually expects until they get in there and try to make like a, a really robust multiplayer like action game. Yeah. Um, but those guys have been working really hard. They're using Shooter Game. Uh, the shooter game that you get from the marketplace is kind of the, the, the framework for bringing all of our net code and security stuff up to like super yeah. polished quality. Yeah, so right now the, the big push is, uh, so we've already put Unreal Engine through what we call offline cert for both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Yep. Um, but that, that really only tests like a basic set of the functionality there as far as sign in and chat and stuff like that. Now we're pushing for uh, online cert for both of those platforms, which means like leader or not even more than leaderboards, matchmaking, party support. And uh, for all of those you've ever shipped games like that, it's such a mess of edge cases of like have a dude in a party here, he joins a party over here through invite. Oh, uh, it's very complicated. Yeah. So the idea is, you know, let's get our, our online subsystem layer, which is sort of our, our glue level to all those different uh, you know, platform-specific APIs, um, get that fully function certified by those guys so that any developer, you know, you're targeting that or ideally you build your game, you can deploy it to, you know, say a Google device and use Google Play yes. and their features because there's a lot of parity That's across right. the platforms these days. That's the idea. Wherever yeah. there's overlap, yeah, yeah. you'll have the generic, it should just yeah. work wherever there's overlap and then you jump in and yeah. if there's fringe features that are platform specific, you go and implement support for those if you need Yeah, them. and ideally it's as close to just clicking a checkbox as we can get it, you know, without knowing what kind of game experience you're building, right? And I don't think people realize, like, 
we, the last time we went through multiplayer cert here was for Gears of War Judgment and, and three before that, but that was with Fallen Real Engine 3. Yeah. We rewrote the whole online and networking system between Everything. three and four, and almost nothing survived. Yeah. So <laughs> this is kind of its proving ground <laughs> to actually... Survival, that's just such a good way to... The code just, uh, yeah. just goodbye. We wanted to make it super easy and clean, so... That's a, a nice problem. New networking layer. It's dangerous when you start deleting code and feature. It's, it's addictive. You're like, oh yeah, that's we could rewrite it. Delete, delete. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> what are we left? Yep. Uh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So ongoing efforts there, and then well, even broader than that. I mean, we support clearly, you know, like co-op, four-player, whatever, all the way up to massive player counts yeah. and dedicated servers. I know it's crazy. Yeah. Like it's so easy to actually make a multiplayer game in Unreal. Okay, going back to my top-down space shooter that I made the other day. Like, as soon as I got working and as soon as I had, like, tons of bullets flying on my guys, like, okay, I need something to shoot at. <laughs> and literally, it took maybe, like, 25 minutes before I had four players on my screen using the in-editor multi-client okay. play button. And yeah, I yeah. could just hit play, four windows appear on my screen with four-player multiplayer, yeah. one gamepad controls one, keyboard and mouse control the other. It's just, like, full networking. It's like, I was, even I'm amazed sometimes how yeah. easy it is to do. That's come a long ways. I remember, was it, like, Gears 2, I had some crazy tools, so I could, you know, once I had a build... I, I literally had you know my two PCs, four monitors, four Xboxes behind me, and it was like one click deploy. I get them all to join the server. My little 360 multiplayer testing. Now all within the editor, multiple viewports. Instantly, yeah, yeah. Just click one Super. button. Yeah, it's really fun. You guys don't know how well you have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It still amazes me yeah. actually yeah. how well it works. Yeah, but and it and it doesn't break every day somehow. <laughs> sometimes our gameplay system seem like our framework for gameplay sometimes seems complicated, um, you know, because there's a lot to it, but. A lot of it is because we are we embrace multiplayer, mm -hmm. and, and multiplayer is a first class feature in our engine. And we encourage, like our framework set up such that if you build your game, it's not it's never hard to make it a multiplayer game. Yeah, uh, because you've built it automatically for multiplayer just by kind of building it in our framework. Yeah, um, but and, and still give you all the options to do it efficiently, right? Yeah. Like not just mass sending all oh, the yeah, data. Oh yeah, gosh. Right? Yep. Um, yep. You yeah. can surgically micro every little bit of bandwidth yep. that you use. Yeah, which is really cool. Which, yeah, I would say multiplayer gameplay coding was some of the most fun just because it breaks all the traditional rules of yep. data arriving out of order and like, you have partial pieces, but how much of the game can you still get running? Yeah. We actually, and I, I just, our character movement component in the engine, like that's a world-class example, I think, of predictive client uh, <laughs> movement. Like it's a yeah. really good, like it's as good yeah. as anything, we're probably using it in Unreal Tournament. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really good, um, uh, uh, you know, just sort of, Relatively cheat-free, server mm -hmm. authoritative, super smooth yeah. movement that with server corrections. I almost wish that, and we had we have a discussion about this going internally of how can we take the sort of network um, uh, uh, predictive and security stuff out of ca character movement component, and make that able to use with any movement component. Mm -hmm. I mean, the easy workaround is just make your obviously use character movement yeah. component for whatever you're doing, even if it's like a, yeah. a spaceship, but. Uh, just kind of abstracting that out would it let us use it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's certain parts you can. It, it definitely, you know, especially UT, back when Polds was writing the original prediction for UT99, I know there was a lot of custom tailoring for the specific cases of the type of movement and slopes and stuff like that. Yep, so that's right. That's you can go very deep. Although I, I'm really curious, too, with, you know, bandwidth and latency these days, how much of that is as, as needed. Yeah. I it remember. It feels like upstream still yeah. is pretty crap for a lot of people in the United States, at least. Yeah, fair point. Yeah. But All yeah. right. Cool. Well, I think before we run out of time, we should talk yeah. about Marketplace, awesome. huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or should That's we just call it now? We also have <laughs> Q&A. Oh, yeah, Q&A. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, we're talking too long. Okay. <laughs> I'll be quick on the Marketplace. So, yeah, Marketplace is, is coming really soon, actually. Um, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to launch the first version. And we've got a ton of awesome content to, to kick that off, in addition to all the free content that's already in there. Um, Today, I believe, if not today, then tomorrow, we're going to be publishing a set of pages. So we have a, a marketplace fact that explains the terms and, and what we're accepting, all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll have submission guidelines as well. And it outlines not only the process, but some standards we're going to enforce as far as the content. Um, and I just want to speak on our, our goal there. It's like one of the primary values we see with the marketplace is to provide more building blocks for developers that just work, right? We really believe in that drag and drop. Much of how we build the engine and the content, we want to make sure like things are consistent scale, you know, one unit is one centimeter, you know, and, and everything. If it makes sense for that content, it should it should snap to the grid, it should be plug and play. Yep. Um, 
and you know things from texture density to triangle counts, being mindful and efficient about that. Um, you know, we're going to start out with a very uh, curated experience here. We want to make sure that that the marketplace is always a good place to go to find valuable content. Yeah, we don't uh, want just a hodgepodge of kind of just kind of uploaded junk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not that people you know create junk or anything, but yeah. I do. I create yeah, horrible okay. looking teapot meshes. Yeah, I'm we want to we want to keep Mike Fricker out of the marketplace. This don't is how we're going to protect. <laughs> Um, so we really have, uh, we're, we're starting with a, a three-step process for getting community submissions into the marketplace. Um, and I'll caveat all this is, this is, this is new, this is early days. Um, so please bear with us and please give us lots of feedback as we try this. You know, we're, we're making our best uh, intents here and we're going to be fully transparent with this uh, and, and doing it live. Um, but the first process is we'll have a, a form, like I said, hopefully going out today or tomorrow, that allows you to submit you know, title, description, enough, and some screenshots, enough to describe what you want to submit. We'll then take that, make sure it's nothing offensive and you know, reasonably put together. We'll put that on a community board. Uh, we have a Trello board that we'll be putting together that has categories for all the marketplace submissions, and that'll allow the community then to express interest in the stuff they most want to see cool. coming next. Nice. Um, and then internally, on a regular basis, we will select the things for distribution based on the community interest, um, the best of those, and make them available. And at that point, you know, we'll get your extra information for distribution and all that good stuff. So, um, like I said, we'll have more details on the website today, um, but really, really looking forward to it. And yep. then, uh, yeah, full marketplace launch in just a couple of weeks. So, yeah, look forward to that. It's crazy. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. So I'm sure there'll be a bunch of questions on that, but do you want to jump onto the, uh, the usability I'll just do thing it, I'll quick? just do it really quick. Okay. Um, so uh, we did kind of a fun thing at work uh, last week that I want to share with the community, too. And that's, we did what I call it kind of a usability bug bash. Uh, it was kind of the trial edition, since we weren't sure how this would work. So I grabbed, yeah. like, about 15 of my coworkers. And we did. We took a whole day, and we just kind of used the engine, kind of like you guys would on your first day. We tried to pretend to be brand new, and just kind of went through and just kind of looked for like things that are just like small and annoying. And it, don't get us wrong; like we see all the feedback <laughs> from you guys too, and those all end up in our bug database, and we're trying to fix those things. But we needed to see it firsthand. Uh, it's just kind of, I think, eat your own dog food, kind of. Well, yeah, it's very easy for us to be so heads down that we forget to step and use it the yeah. same way everybody else does, right? And we're so busy, some person working on animation may never have a chance to go in and spend a lot of time uh, in, say, the collision system. This was just a time to do crossover and yeah. get us more familiar with everything. So we did this on last Thursday. We spent all day doing it, and we, and we wrote down everything that we found, all these like, kind of niggly things and some big, crazy things. And uh, we sent it to a mailing list, and then uh, uh, myself and James Golding and Andy Bale, we all gathered all that up, and we put it on a big uh, board in Jira, and I don't know, Chance, can you, scroll, can you put that on yeah. the screen? We're just going to just, I know this was going to happen here. This is going to end up in slow motion later, and someone's going to be like, Why not uh, that yeah, one? Why? <laughs> so we kind of found all these problems, and then we went and voted on them uh, yesterday and today, so they're kind of color-coded based off what our team kind of thought were the most you know, annoying to us, just the, just the 15 or so people that were participating in this bug bash yep. uh, in all these areas. So we, we came up with over 400 things. It's not still a kind small of, list. Yeah, it's not a small <laughs> list. Over 400 things, which I think is, is pretty fun, just, just in one day, just kind of this burst feedback. Yep. The nice thing is it's all up to date, it's all like a, a snapshot in time of like kind of the little things that we really could use improvement uh, mm -hmm. uh, on that day. And then, and then today, what the team is actually doing today, um, so we gathered all the information last Thursday, and this Thursday, everyone's just going in and trying to fix things fix things uh, just off this list. They're looking at the ones that are color-coded brightly and, and, and some of the other ones and just, just trying to see how much we can fix today. Yeah. So if you follow the master branch on GitHub today, you'll probably see um, us fixing stuff off this list. It's just for like a fun yeah. usability bug bash. So yeah. just something that I'm hoping, this is, like I said, a trial edition. In the future, maybe we can keep it even more open. The voting, ideally, would be even open to the, everyone. Like, I think that'd be a fun thing. So yeah. we'll no, see totally. how it goes. Yeah, no, I, I think there's tremendous value we see and being able to focus across teams on, on this kind of effort, right? Um, yeah, and I think this is something, it seems to be going really well, and we hope to repeat this on a regular basis. Yep. Um, on, on the public voting, the other thing that we're working on, I don't have a timetable on it. You can take the screen off now. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Come on, Chance, stay with us. Um, I like chatting. Uh, probably not <laughs> interesting. I'm trying to get you guys some questions. Okay, no worries. Um, as far as uh, getting feedback from you guys on, on the features you most want to see, you know, we've got our public roadmap out there. Um, and there's some things that, you know, it's awesome to get your voting data. We definitely are looking on that on a regular basis to help us understand where the most interest is. The thing it's not good at is capturing stuff that we haven't thought of yet, right? Yeah. Um, so we're looking at some other options there, uh, and hopefully we have more to talk about that soon. I just want to give a, a shout out to 
you know, there's a, a lively discussion right now about uh, an infinite ocean plane in our forums, you know, previously the, the road editor. There's definitely going to be cases where there's features that we agree would be awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, for whatever reason, we may not be able to jump on it right away, but we're definitely, we are listening and we are looking for opportunities to integrate uh, those into our plans. So, you know, I, may be, I know it may be frustrating to not see, like, why isn't this here right now? Um, but please keep telling us and, and, and we will do our best effort to get that in, uh, into our plans. So, cool. Well said. All right, so yeah, let's just jump into questions. Yeah, so on that. Do we have uh, some here? Yeah, it should be on the back here. We can go through and oh, see. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so, Samaritan demo, been asked a couple of times by us. That's going to come to the. E. Not Samaritan. Yeah. I I, so, I think Samaritan, that one's it was built in UE3. It's UE3, yeah. Oh, so, okay. that's, that's the biggest stumbling block there. We, I want to say we have looked at the content to see if we could salvage the assets and make those available at some that's point. Right. Yep. I don't know if we have any uh, like timetable on that, but that, that would be coming. Potentially. Yeah, I don't think there's any active work on it right now, but it's probably just on the backlog of like cool yeah. stuff we could do. But yeah. I know we haven't ported the demo to UE4 yet. Yeah. Although, like, I mean, it would look awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it looks awesome in UE3 too, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we make something from scratch. Uh, OpenGL cool. 4.5. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, is that anywhere on our radar? Uh, I haven't heard any discussion about that yet. Uh, I know that our team is working with Kronos on mm -hmm. GL stuff, but I'm not sure if 4.5, usually like Mac and Windows drivers are like the limiting thing there, right? Yeah. But if it's coming, I don't know, I guess I'll have to follow up with the rendering team, but yeah. if it's coming in a new Xcode or a new iOS update, then yeah, yeah. of course. Say, yeah. If we need to support it, we'll support it. Right. Um, yeah. Definitely. And then Lots of UNG stuff, like yeah. The, so the auto layout, this is this is built in, right? You yeah. You you have the you can anchor uh, components to different regions of the canvas. Yeah, anchoring is probably not the right word. That might be a feature that we add someday. Right. But, that, yeah, uh, that's, I think that's what we're talking it, about, like it's scaling it's, to fill, anchoring, moving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Kind of yeah. yeah. And then you can definitely choose the different screen ratios. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. And then stuff. It's does it, the right it, thing. Yeah. It's automatic flow layout. Definitely. Okay. It's just more cool. more a matter of like your expectation when you. Like yep. you're, you're, it's not like you're grabbing, it, for, for example, like the Apple web, uh, uh, UI kit, mm -hmm. um, that's more of like a sort of sticky anchoring. It has like a solver that kind of uh, that goes and lets you grab things and just sort of proportionally stick it to other things in the UI. It's right. a different type of style of UI layout than Slate that gets okay. you, the, can, you can achieve the exact same results. But, you know, we're looking at both, but the, mm -hmm. UMG is based off Slate. Slate uses kind of a, mm -hmm. a top-down uh, uh, flow, declarative flow. So, gotcha. Cool. Uh, but, uh, Semantics. Yep, yeah. yep. So, and a bunch of other UMG feature requests. So, drag and drop. Yep, that's that's an obvious one. Uh, controller support. Yeah, game pads. Hell, yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then focus traversal. That's the bane of all UI systems. But yes, it's it's on our <laughs> radar. Yep. Slate already has that, so I'm sure they're thinking about how yeah, to expose cool. it. Uh, cardboard. Google Cardboard VR support. That one. I'm not sure. I'm kind of surprised Nick hasn't plugged it in already. I don't think there's much. Involved. Yeah. Or maybe you can do it. You're 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 a Google Glasser. I I don't even know what Google Cardboard is. <laughs> oh really? No, it's, I haven't even seen it's, it. It's it's just like a little cardboard yeah. template. I think you can buy pre-made ones from yeah. some company, and it's like a do-it-yourself HMD. You use like your Google phone. <laughs> Slide your phone in it, and it yeah. does all the. Yeah, the it's an interesting proof of concept. I'll I didn't think it it, I thought it was an April Fool's thing when I first saw it, but no. It's no, real. no, I've I've used one. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, no, my wife ordered one. I was like, pretty, pretty really. It's pretty okay. good. <laughs> cool. Um, so yes, that and you know every uh, VR device under the sun, I think we will eventually support yeah. at our, the rate we're going now. I know oh, yeah. Nick has a couple of them that uh, he's working on. So even 4.4 has an updated Morpheus support. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be right up to the latest version. If you have the kit from Sony, yeah. I think you need special access to get it. But cool. The recent changes to the script plugin and also how you might make your own script integration. Mm. Oh, any specific thing about? Yeah, there was a just a Git link to it. I can send it to you from the forums. Okay. We can take it offline if you want. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah cool. I mean, that. yeah, we're still working on the script plugin. I mean, yeah, the, we want it to be as easily easy and seamless as possible. If you want to make scripting languages, we know that there's several out there that the community is building and companies are building. Super awesome, right? Like so, we have a uh, Robert uh, who wrote the script plugin in UE4 has like a, a Lua uh, uh, integration that he maintains that probably will end up. Uh, as a plugin that we'll just give out at some point, yeah. Just to t just to show an example, but I think actually you can download it from the forums. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, so there's a couple questions here on marketplace. Uh, let's see, there's one here about do we need to link a credit card, PayPal account to our Unreal account to start selling something? Uh, we're going to have a, a separate. Uh, we're going to do you know pay payment through electric funds transfer EFT, right? 
Um, so we'll have to get uh, your bank information at that point once we uh, are getting your content ready to distribute on the marketplace. At least for now. Yeah, for now. You know, eventually, I would say our roadmap is we want a fully automated system, right click from the content browser, publish it, done, walk away. Get rich. I yeah, have an easy way for me to upload <laughs> yes. my crap now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Except for the special Mike Fricker filter. Yeah. <laughs> um, community curation. Yeah, but it, it is going to take us some time to get there, right? So we're starting starting from from scratch here. Um, as far as uh, I think that regarding contents that need to be updated for engine versions and old version, um, I would say for pure assets, you know, those those formats have been pretty rock solid in the engine for many many years now. So it's unlikely. Yeah things will have issues from that regard. Just blueprints sometimes break. Blueprints, and eventually when we are accepting code plugins, um, there is going to be some burden of version management. Yeah. We've been kicking around what we can do from an automated way on our end to try to you know, automatically compile things and test them as new engine versions are made available. Um, but yeah. I think a lot of that is still still TBD, and we'll, we'll try a couple different approaches there. Yeah, I think that probably one thing we could do is make sure that plugin authors have a good amount of heads up to try out preview versions. I mean, we give the, pre the preview versions of any upcoming releases already on GitHub anyway. Yeah. So plugin authors will be able to test their, their work against a close to final version of the engine at any point. Yeah. Uh, so we just need to make sure we give appropriate heads up and, and help with the logistical mm -hmm. uh, part of making sure that binaries are freshened. Yep, totally. Yeah, yeah our, our goal there is, well, A, don't break things as much as is reasonable. Definitely. You know, um, make our, our little stable APIs. We're so. still getting better at that part. I, I say this all the time when I'm on here, but basically <laughs> every version we're trying to break less stuff and, and, and find more, uh, uh, just more, just better ways to be backwards compatible yeah. and deprecate things in a clean way so we don't, we yeah. don't want your experience to be you open your project and it just doesn't work anymore and obfuscate it, confusing errors. Yeah. bombard it with like it's no good so yeah exactly i mean that was that was a goal from day one is we always want you to to feel confident picking a new engine version that your stuff is just going to work and I, I would say that the part that is still the biggest challenge for us right now would be on the blueprint side just because there's been a lot of earth moving there still yeah. um, and there's still yeah. a lot to do like yeah. i've i think i said the last time is we don't want to paralyze our engine team too we need to <laughs> we need to be able to make changes and make you know, foundational changes in the engine uh, if we yeah. need to, but we'll try and keep the old stuff working for a while. Yeah. So we don't break stuff. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, having things side by side, you know, we've said yeah. this with, as we get more underway on sequencer and the cinematic pipeline that we have awesome vision for, um, you know, matinee will still be supported alongside yep. that for, for a long time. Yep. And, and like with Cascade and the new effects system, Niagara, like I said, ideally where possible, the content should, if not have a transformation Definitely. import step, yep. it may be seamless uh, as much as it makes sense, right? So never, never leave you guys hanging. Yeah, and on that, too, we had a question about Sequencer. Any updates on that at this point? So I, I know Matt and the team have, have done some work for, you know, animation supporting in UMG. Um, mm -hmm. As yep. far as the grander plans with Sequencer, we haven't really broken that ground yet. Yep. Although I think the, the discussions are heating up. Yeah, well, unfortunately, <laughs> like the, the team members that are best suited to work on Sequencer, um, it's kind of the masterminds behind it, are working on, on real motion graphics, right? And, and that's kind of the order of priority, yep. since we have a, a, a fairly awesome cinematic editing tool already in the engine. It's just, um, right. Sequencer is going to be a lot better, but we really want to get the UI editor done. Yep. Uh, so that's the focus. The timeline that you see at the bottom of UMG, if you open today's build when it gets released soon, um, <laughs> uh, is actually Sequencer embedded inside um, uh, the Unreal Motion Graphics Editor. So that's, that's kind of any polish that we've done towards making UMG better in that regard will help that part of Sequencer. And although it's only a small part of the whole Sequencer project, um, I mean, incidentally, it's, it's improving even yeah. with this. It's there. It's real. Yeah, it's, it's executing real. code. Yeah. Cool. All right. You can always run Sequencer, just run with dash Sequencer on the command line and yeah. prepare yourself for some breakage. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's all out there. We got time for a couple more? Yeah, or? sure. All right, cool. Uh, and we're going to see multiple camera rendering for a split screen uh, without render targets. So to, a, to be able to do... Oh, it's straight to the frame buffer? Yeah. I believe that is planned, yeah. Uh, it's beyond me. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I know we have split screen, that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to follow up okay. separately to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that awesome. we want that. Yeah. What's, what's, cool. what's the implication there? Just more efficient? Uh, efficiency is the only thing I think of. Okay. I mean, often you want to use render targets, flexibility right. there, but um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't draw to the frame buffer. Maybe it's a platform specific thing. We have to check uh, with Penwarden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see, any update on packaging? 64-bit uh, for shipping. Uh, Oh, uh, the okay, interesting. For binary, yeah. Yeah, the binary version doesn't support this mm -hmm. uh, because, and you know, there's not really a great reason why not. We just made the call that um, 
distributing a bunch of extra static libraries for 64-bit shipping was just going to make our download size too big. Yeah. Yeah. So we were like, ah, most people probably want to support 32-bit and 64-bit, so we'll just give them the 32-bit binaries. Yeah. So you need to use GitHub if you want to make a shipping 64-bit. Yeah. It sounds like this could be an optional download yeah. in the launcher. Yeah, plug-in. That's, That's what we need. Yeah. 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 And then we talked about taking like, oh, you're not going to work with Android right now. Why are we downloading you? Yeah. You know, like a gig of Android stuff. Um, well, sort of, and especially if it's not updating, right? We should be. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. modularizing that stuff is on the launcher, launcher team's list. Hopefully, get the launcher team up here to talk about some of this cool stuff they're doing too. Yeah, but they're not here to defend themselves. So they're doing all the things. Yes. This week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. That's all I got. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Like I said, you know, four four should be hitting soon today, within the hour, I would hope. Um, marketplace, you know, we'll be opening for submissions and, and publishing our guidelines today as well, if, if not today, tomorrow. Um, and then the marketplace itself will be here in, in a few weeks. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else we covered? And Linux editor four five it will be progress. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. all good stuff. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Pleasure. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you all next week. Same time, same channel.